Hello everyone, it's Alina. Welcome to my Soap General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Attempts by Curtis to stand Spencer's Parisian romance with Trina and Don's realization that Esme played them are all part of today's General Hospital. Spencer snags a table at a fancy restaurant in Paris for Trina's romantic supper. Although Trina is captivated by Paris, she is curious about his other plans for the evening. He is determined not to reveal the secret. The sight of black gold caviar on the menu brings back a childhood memory for Spencer, who begged his dad to give it a try. It turned out to be nothing more than black beans, but he still liked it when he got a chance to try it. He hopes Ace gets to experience memories like those. Spencer brings up his evening plans again, and he offers to tell Trina, but she declines, saying that she doesn't want to ruin the surprise. As she sits in class, she wonders what he'll be up to. He plans to undertake some exploring in an effort to discover his passion. He is sorry he wasted so much time when he was here before planning against his father and Ava with Esma. He's also sorry he brought her into such difficulties since she didn't deserve it, but she admits he didn't either. He says she makes him want to be a better person. After dinner, Spencer leads Trina to the rest of their surprise and they head outside. This is all occurring, and she can't believe it. They move off, then Esme appears and pursues them. In Toronto, Dante and Chase, together with the Toronto cop, knock on the apartment door. Maggie opens the door and recognizes Dante. Dante asks if they may come in and talk, and she invites them in. Maggie adds she's been working here in Toronto since they last saw one another in Ireland, and things are calm and she'd like to keep them that way. Dan doesn't want to cause controversy and explains they are merely looking for Esma. Maggie claims they are looking in the wrong area, as she has no idea where Esma is and she hasn't seen her in years. Maggie admits she wrote Esma months ago, but she never heard back. Dan says they have a letter from her inviting Esma to visit. Maggie proposes they get the handwriting certified as she wrote no such thing. After searching the place, Chase says there is no proof Esm has been there. Dante and Chase understand they've been duped, and Dante asks Maggie if she knows where Esm would go. She doesn't know, and she tried to steer her to a better path years ago, but she was determined on reconciling with her family. Dante thinks that might be the key. Dante and Chase step out, and Dante suspects Esm may be going after Ace. Dante decides to give Laura a call. At GH, Laura sits at Kevin's bedside, but he's asleep again. She missed when he woke up, and a nurse tells Portia that Kevin has been in and out. Eventually, Kevin comes too, and Portia asks him basic questions to make sure he's okay. Laura wonders who did this to him, and he admits it was Esma. Laura says they assumed it was her and Esma has left, but Dante and Chase are following a lead on her to Toronto. Laura asks whether he has a clue why she assaulted him. He says they were talking, and he believed he was getting through to her, and suddenly everything went black. Portia leaves them, and Laura tells Kevin how afraid she was when she found him on the floor of Alex's office. He quips he didn't survive Ryan just to be done in by his daughter. Laura is sad over Esme, and she believed she could turn her life around, but then she got her memory back. Laura feels Esm didn't have an opportunity to reconcile her two identities before Nicholas snatched Ace, driving her over the edge. Kevin doesn't think Esm would go to Toronto, and the whole idea feels strange to him. He feels something happened at Alex's office that he can't recall. An investigator comes to chat to Kevin about what he remembers. He recalls when he initially stepped into Alex's office, Esm was on the laptop and had the invader's corporate card in her hand. Laura decides to phone Alexis. At the courthouse, Alexis arrives late, and Tracy appears too. Sam is chasing out additional information, and Alexis finds that Muldoon consulted an oncologist before going to meet Finn. Alexis questions how an oncologist missed late-stage cancer. Gregory responds, he didn't. Alexis is brought up to speed on the assumption Muldoon set Finn up. Liz asks if this is enough for the judge to throw out the case. Tracy thinks they should put Muldoon's wife back on the stand, uncover the fraud claim, and make her crack. Martin says without proof the wife knew then it would be a risk. Tracy said if the accusation is out there in the public domain, then GH lawyers can go with it. 
Gregory realizes Tracy isn't helping and proposes they fetch some water. Finn asks Martin what would happen to Mrs. Muldoon if learned about the fraud, and he answers she'd be charged with jail time. Liz says they still need to find out if she was in on the fraud. Martin looks across at Diane and the wife and gets an idea. In the hall, Mrs. Muldoon laments to Diane that she has no money to pay for her children's college, let alone care if they don't win this lawsuit. Martin appears and requests to speak to Diane alone. Diane advises Mrs. Muldoon not to approach Finn. Naturally, Muldoon's wife heads into court and confronts Finn and says if he had a shred of humanity, then he'd plead guilty immediately. Alexis feels she shouldn't be engaging Finn, but he wants to hear what she has to say. Alexis excuses herself when she gets a text from Laura, and Finn informs Mrs. Muldoon that he encouraged her husband to seek further treatment, and he didn't. She adds it isn't like her husband, he would do anything not to abandon them, he'd do anything for his family, which is why he was the one who encouraged them to sue. She says it's so awful for a man to die so young, and Finn agrees. Meanwhile, Martin tells Diane that he needs to add someone to the witness list, Dr. Powell. Diane has no idea who that is. Diane and Martin return to court, and Diane quickly takes her client away from Finn. Gregory and Tracy return too, and they question what occurred. Finn claims the woman is in pain, and Martin says Diane didn't recognize the oncologist's name when he announced he was summoning them to the stand. Finn and Liz both feel Mrs. Muldoon had nothing to do with the deception. Finn doesn't want to see Mrs. Muldoon go to prison for fraud as she's all her kids have, but Tracy says he needs to think about his kid. Liz pulls Finn aside and says he needs to consider utilizing the fraud allegation, but Finn doesn't know whether it will help to throw a sad widow under the bus. He knows in the end, someone is being injured. Diane asks Mrs. Muldoon if she knows a Dr. Powell, but she doesn't. Meanwhile, Martin asks Finn what he wants to do. Finn hates the notion that Mrs. Muldoon could go to prison, but Martin warns he could lose everything if they don't pursue this. In the hall, Tracy grabs Mrs. Muldoon to have a chat. Back at GH, Stella sees Curtis at his PT appointment. The therapist Ben excuses himself, and Curtis says she doesn't need to check up on him. She responds, too late, I've been doing it your whole life. Curtis claims he just wants to examine how the procedure went, and Stella considers him stubborn. Ben the therapist returns, and she asks him if it is dangerous for Curtis to try and stand so quickly after surgery. Ben says it will be safe between him and the parallel bars. Curtis is able to use his arms to lift himself up, but he struggles to stand on his own and crashes back into his chair. He's troubled and says he's done for the day. Stella asks Ben for a moment, and Curtis believes Stella it was good not to try and stand too fast. Stella asks why he thought it would work on the first try. Curtis confesses he has newfound hope following the procedure and wants to go forward. She says he will, but it will be a slow journey, and he'll have to take it one attempt at a time. Portia arrives and lets Stella and Curtis know that Kevin is awake and growing well. She asks where Ben is and if the session is ended. Stella asks Curtis if it is. He says he's taking a break and asks Stella to bring back Ben. She exits and Portia asks what she missed. He says he pushed too hard and injured his ego. He asks about Esme, and Portia hopes she's found and placed in jail as she never wants to hear about her again. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please click like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.